Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot. And I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Do you know, it's just my luck, isn't it? It really is. On a nice day, I imagine this would be <laughs> the most amazing view from up here because I didn't know before coming to today's parish that <laughs> this would be on a hill. This particular part of it would be on a hill. The part I'm at, as you can see, is a church. There it is. <laughs> and I imagine from that churchyard, the view around here is absolutely stunning, absolutely spectacular, but it's misty. Brilliant. Anyway, enough about the weather. Uh, this church, this church right here, this forms part of today's parish, which is one of East Yorkshire's longest in terms of its name. This is the parish of Home upon Spalding Moor. Home upon Spalding Moor, sometimes known as Home on Spalding Moor, or just as Home, is a large village in the East Riding of Yorkshire, situated approximately eight miles northeast of Howden and five miles southwest of Market Wheaton. To make it easier to repeat saying throughout this video, I'll keep referring to it as Home. It lies on the A163 road where it joins the A614. In terms of major cities, the village is closest to York, which is just under 20 miles away, whilst Hull is 23 miles away. I'm going to have to research this. I have no idea what a Tatham is. But uh, apparently, this street is Old Tatham. Could be something and nothing. Who knows? It turned out not to be anything. It's a village in Lancashire, meaning Tata's homestead, so nothing to do with home. The civil parish is formed by the village of Home on Spalding Moor and a raft of smaller hamlets out on Spalding Moor to the south. These include Bursey, Hasholme, Tollingham and Wellenbridge. According to the 2011 census, Home had a population of 3,172, an increase on the 2001 figure of 2,948. The word home is Danish in origin and means island. That would make a lot of sense. Spalding Moor was a marsh dominated by a single hill, the very same hill where this video began outside the church. We'll get to that later. Now I fully expected in Home Upon Spalding Moor to find plenty of information boards. It's a very historic place. There's two here, uh, very close together. There's one here which is a bit difficult to read, but I will take some pictures of this. There's a nice map of the village as well. I'll just show you where we are. Uh, I've, uh, where did I start? Somewhere there. I'm here, there about, or there, thereabouts, near the old school. That's it, there we are, we're there. Not there, we're here. And uh, my route so far has taken me around this part, uh, and I'm gonna be walking around here uh before coming back to the car which is all the way up there i'll take some pictures of this one and there's also another one which is over the way here uh it's much bigger as you can see it's there look i'll take pictures of both and hopefully there's enough information on them both to provide you with enough for this video on the larger much clearer board there's lots of information regarding the trails you can walk or cycle on here So those trails I've just told you about are all marked on the other side of this board. Here they are, look. Here's Home Upon Spalding Moor, and you can see that the trails are marked on the map, and some of them overlap each other. There's three of them which run down here, for example, towards Tollingham. That one branches off there, two of them go down here towards Bercy. So yeah, if you come here, do check out this board if you want a, a nice walk around. All the trails are on this uh, board here. Uh, on one on both sides of it now I'm not following any particular trail I'm following my own route like I said earlier um, so 
I won't necessarily catch all of this and it's impossible to anyway because you just look at the size of Spalding Moor it's massive the village is you know up here in the sort of north all of this all of this is Spalding Moor and uh, I'll be driving around some bits and bobs of this later so uh, yeah I'll do my best to catch all of it or most of it through the 17th and 18th centuries, the main occupation for people in the village was growing and dressing hemp. This gave rise to it sometimes being referred to as Hemp Home. In 1823, home was in the Wapentake of Hartill. Bain's History Directory and Gazetta of the County of York even records that alternative village name, Hemp Home. The population at the time was 1,318. Occupations included 23 farmers and yeomen, three blacksmiths, two wheelwrights, three shoemakers, four shopkeepers, two coal dealers, two corn millers, a tailor, a butcher, a joiner, a bricklayer, and an ornamental plasterer. A carrier operated between the village and Market Wheaton on Wednesdays and to Howden on Saturdays. Notable people associated with home include Marmaduke Langdale, a prominent royalist commander of the English Civil War. Langdale had fought alongside Prince Rupert and the Marquess of Newcastle at the Battle of Marston Moor. Before the war, he was the High Sheriff of Yorkshire and later a Catholic convert. Awarded the title Baron Langdale of Home in 1658, his family was based here at Home Hall. Alec Horsley is another famed associate. It was he who started Northern Dairies, right here in Home. I like how these new houses make reference to Baron Langdale. Langdale Quarter, important name around here that. The manor and estate belonged for several centuries to the constables of Flamborough. The last of the family that had possession of it was Sir William Constable. He was a lieutenant colonel in the Cromwellian army and one of the commissioners of the High Court who sat on the trial of Charles I and signed the King's death warrant. The greater part of the parish prior to enclosure in 1776 was a moorland. It was seen as a wasteland sometimes referred to as a common. In many places it was boggy, which rendered any attempt on the part of a stranger to cross it extremely dangerous. As a result, a cell was founded either by the Vavasors, who we mentioned in Spaldington, or by the constables at Wellenbridge on the edge of Spalding Moor for two monks. The idea was simple. One of the monks was employed in guiding travellers across the dreary wastes, and the other in imploring the protection of heaven for those who are exposed to the dangers of the road. It's believed the cell was at Monk Farm on the western side of the moor, and the name, as well as the existence of the site of a moated building, seems to give some probability to the supposition. The average house out here will cost you £234,000. Pretty good, I thought, given its location in a very desirable area of the East Riding. From a demographic standpoint, this is a parish heavily populated by white British citizens. There's only 19 people that live here that identify as anything else, accounting for just 0.6% of the more than 3,000 residents. So I feel like I'm missing a big chunk of the village out by doing this, but I'm at the end of Baileywood Lane, and to the left here, well, to my left, your right as you look at it, uh, we have Back Lane. Now, it appears to be generally speaking just more of the same of what you've just seen a few minutes ago with these this type of housing here um, on the map at least and there's one street called Springfield Gardens which is actually a private road so I wouldn't be able to film that anyway um, let me know if there's anything down there because my route now is going to go away from there and head back this way towards the main road Home covers 46.4 square kilometres, most of which is taken up by the massive Spalding Moor. The village itself is quite small area-wise, and the result is the population density is pretty small here, 66.38 per square kilometre. The population has seen very little change too over the past decade, falling by just 0.27%. The Church of All Saints stands in an elevated position at the top of the hill we spoke about earlier. The parish church and rectory was in the patronage of St John's College, Cambridge. This was mostly built in the 13th century, although a church is mentioned in the Doomsday Book here. It was designated as a Grade 1 listed structure in 1966 and is now recorded in the National Heritage List for England. Now I'm no geological expert, so I may mispronounce this next thing. The hill the church stands on is made of Kerpermal. 
Kerpa marl is a term for multiple layers of mudstone and siltstone of Triassic age, which occurs mainly beneath parts of the Midlands and here in northern Yorkshire. I'm led to believe there's a small nuclear bunker sited somewhere close to the church too. In January and February, to save heating costs, services here are held in a building in the main village as opposed to here at the church. And here is that building, the old school, close to the village green where the information boards are located. There's also a Methodist church, which was formerly a primitive Methodist church, and a Christian fellowship church in the village. The ex-Wesleyan Zion Methodist Church closed in 1987 and is now a private house. The village is served by a bus, that'll be the number 46 to York. The nearest railway stations are to the south of the village in Howden and Eastrington. Home has at least three pubs. These are the Hare and Hounds, which Google currently lists as permanently closed. This looked open though. Second is Ye Old Red Lion, definitely open and fast building a reputation for being a fabulous place for food. Thirdly is the Blacksmith's Arms, but this isn't the last pub related building in home. Check out this, the Gun Room and the Wall of Sound, a professional gun shop and a home technology showroom respectively, based at New Inn Corner, suggesting this was formerly the New Inn. It's also been known as the Kingfisher, this pub apparently. Nearby Howden, Ghoul and Market Wheaton contain the main amenities including supermarkets and chain shops, but home does pretty well for itself. There's a few local convenience stores, a post office, a bakery and a butcher's, two takeaway outlets, a school, a sportswear store, a pharmacy and a doctor's surgery and even a mobile library with internet access. Let's have a closer look at some of those. There's a lot here so here's a rapid fire compilation of them. A large village hall was built by volunteers in 1957 to 1959, although fundraising started way back in 1913. The large main hall can hold 200 people and has a large, well-equipped stage that was formerly used by home players when the hall was first built. It lends itself to conferences, music and wedding receptions. Behind this is a football pitch. The village's football team, Home Rovers, was founded in 1922 by local residents and continues to exist. They play in the East Riding County League Premier Division. Home has a garage too. This is Southgate Garage and it's where you'll find Crown Commercials. There's also a petrol station too on the road south towards Howden. Home's GP surgery is part of the Riding's Medical Group. They have branches in Brough, South Cave and Budworth too. Since 1989, the local primary school has been twinned with a primary school in Lemgo, Germany. Once a year, about 20 to 30 pupils visit Grundschule Horstmar for one week. Check out this crucifix in the churchyard at All Saints. I felt this was notable enough to be included in this section. Also on this hill is a beacon, which gave the name Home Beacon to this contemporary part of Hart Hill Wapentake. There's an RAF memorial close to a former base here, which we'll talk about later, but there's also this memorial area in the main village. Home was served by Home Moor Railway Station on the Selby to Driffield line between 1848 and 1954. You might recognise this former railway line. This is the same one that ran through Bubworth and Foggathorpe. Like Bubworth, the platforms still exist and you can walk on them. The station was originally called Home Yorkshire, but was renamed Home Moor in 1923. 
The line was originally single track and there was only one platform on the upside of the line when the station opened. After the doubling of the line around 1889, the station had two facing platforms on the east side of a level crossing. The old station can be found opposite the massive Meadow Foods, who make sweetened dairy products at their factory on the edge of the village. A dairy for more than 75 years, it's now the only factory in the UK to independently manufacture sweetened condensed milk and chocolate crumb products. I have no idea what this is. <clears throat> I was just, just about to drive off. I'm still outside Meadow Foods and at the back of the old station here. And it looks like some kind of memorial or something, some kind of stone. Not quite sure what it's all about. Any of you home locals know? That one behind me right there? That's the old police house. Obviously been converted now into a residential property. Here's the entrance to Home Hall, the country house which was the seat of the Langdale Barony. The hall was designated a Grade 2 listed building in 1966 and is now recorded in the National Heritage List for England. It's now a Sue Ryder care home. The chapel is in use as the village's Roman Catholic Church, although I was unsure if I could go to it, and here's why. So, St John the Baptist Church, I don't think we can access it because, as you can see from this, the chapel was built in 1766 by the Stoughton family as an addition to Home Hall, which is now a Sue Ryder home, so the chances are that's uh, a private road just here, so I won't be able to go down there. You can see the hall in the very far distance, and the church will be down there too. Right, we're just to the south of Home Upon Spalding Moor now in a place called Moor End, or at least that's what the map says. It says it's called Moor End. It's basically just a crossroads with uh, a house here. Uh, that road there is back lane that leads back into Home Upon Spalding Moor. But the reason I've stopped here <clears throat> is really for this sign right here. Look at this. So in a moment, we're going to have a look at Home Industrial Estate, which is actually in Tollingham. But before we go to Tollingham, we're going to the land of Nod and it's two miles away along this road right here and this road is called Port Royal and on the way we'll pass something which seems to be quite a big deal out here and that's the Port Royal Equestrian Centre. Let's go. Port Royal is Yorkshire's premier equestrian centre. It has two main arenas, the Yorkshire Arena with wax surfaces and the R&R Country Arena, a superb floodlit all-weather surface enabling Port Royal to schedule events all year round. It holds a full range of classes, including such disciplines as dressage, show jumping, showing, working hunters and arena show cross to name a few. Port Royal is one of the busiest equestrian centres in Yorkshire. Both arenas are fitted with irrigation systems so the ground conditions are guaranteed whatever the weather. These can get through 10,000 gallons of water a day. There's on-site catering in the cafe and a large area of hard standing parking. At the end of a two mile dead straight road past Port Royal you come to the land of Nod. The sleepy East Yorkshire hamlet here on Spalding Moor is believed to take the origins of its name from the Bible. The name refers to a passage taken from Genesis 4, 16, 18, which reads, So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, northeast of Eden. That would put Eden smack bang in the centre of Yorkshire. So it's one of those quirks of Yorkshire place names, isn't it? Land of Nod. <laughs> you don't find that everywhere, do you? Uh, anyway, we're here and it's marked on old maps as being this area here, right at the end of this lane. You know, you can tell, as you can tell, there's, there's not much here. There's just a, there's, there's a farm called Anchor Farm and there's a house behind these uh, um, trees. And then the parish boundary is actually here. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure if this is a river or just a stream or something, but that's the parish boundary right there. And this is the land of Nod. <laughs> I don't feel sleepy though. The moor was the site of a Royal Air Force station, RAF home on Spalding Moor, which was active during the Second World War and for several years thereafter as a bomber facility, being officially closed in 1954 and transferred to the US Air Force. The US Air Force moved out in 1957 and the field was sold to a private firm. Tollingham is where that former airbase was. These days, it's a huge industrial estate known as Home Industrial Estate. 
Several of the more notable buildings have been destroyed and the runways have been removed. The hangars and several other buildings remain though and are used by a variety of industrial and agricultural tenants, though all are in various states of disrepair. 512 Squadron was based here. From February 1944 to May 1945, also based at home, was 1689 Bomber Defence Training Flight that flew Hawker Hurricane aircraft on fighter affiliation duties. So in effect, all Tollingham is really is home industrial estate. It's literally just what you can see here. It's quite big, but we can't go fully into it because it is, as the sign says over there, a private estate. There is nothing wrong, though, with standing on a public road and filming a private estate. That is perfectly legal before anyone says anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is Tollingham. This is the former RAF base. And there you go. Plenty of history here. After the departure of 512 Squadron, the base was reduced to care and maintenance, with just a small number of men to look after it. Part of the airfield was also used as a store for surplus bombs. Okay, now we're heading for Bursi, and I've stopped at this junction for a good reason, because Bursi is that way. Don't worry about me being parked on the junction, by the way, because there's absolutely no traffic out here. I'm only going to be a couple of seconds. Uh, so Bursi is this way where, where the camera's pointing. And the other way, if you were to go down here, it's a dead end and it takes you to a place, a little tiny hamlet called Hasholm. And Hasholm is very, very important to home upon Spalding Moor. And that's because there was something that was found there. Now, I'm not going to drive down there because I looked at the map and to be honest with you, I can't tell if it's private or not uh, because the Google Street uh, view doesn't take me all the way down towards it so it the chances are it might be private uh, even if it's not it doesn't look like the most desirable of roads <laughs> so as far as this uh, this piece of information about has home goes there's a special section coming your way right now In July 1984, a late Iron Age logboat dating from 750 to 390 BC, now known as the Hasholm logboat, was discovered at Hasholm in the southeast of the parish. The boat was located and excavated on the north bank of the River Fulness in the Broad River Channel, situated in mostly waterlogged clay deposits, which greatly helped the preservation of the timbers. The University of Hull described it in 2010 as the largest surviving logboat in the UK. The hull of the Hasholm logboat was made out of an oak tree. After all the measurements of the hull were taken, it was estimated that the tree had to be approximately 14 metres long, with at least a circumference of 5.4 metres. The boat is made of one whole log and has a flat bottom outboard and inboard. The boat has 11 pairs of equally spaced holes 60 millimetres in diameter. These are believed to be holes for lashings during the construction phase. Poles could have been passed through those holes too to carry the boat. However, the great weight of it would have required some 44 people to lift it. There's no evidence to suggest that the boat has ever been fitted with a mast or sail of any kind. The major means of propulsion were either paddles or long poles, while steering was likely to have been done by an oar. Not far away from Hasholm and Tollingham are the remains of Sodhouse's Lock on the Market Wheaton Canal, and that's one of the things in today's picture bit. Now though, we're in Bursey, which lies to the north of the River Fulness, which joins the canal. This is noted for its chapel, designated a Grade 2 listed building in August 1987. It stands on the site of an earlier chapel and was designed by the well-known architect William Butterfield, who designed, amongst other buildings, Kebble College, Oxford. It was built by Gould stonemason Henry Castle and paid for by the Southern Escort family. Other than that, Bursey is really just a collection of farms and a few cottages, but it's peaceful. I'd certainly love to live out here on Spalding Moor. Okay, time you guys had a picture bit now. Here it comes for the massive parish of home upon Spalding Moor.
I'll tell you something, these very narrow country lanes around the East Riding, they, uh, they really work wonders for your car. Look how mucky my car is now, look. <laughs> All as a result of driving on these. It's pointless washing it, you know, because you know, I'm only going to come out here again at some point and it's still going to be like this. Anyway, I'm waffling. Um, there's one more thing to do, and that is drive from Bercy uh, back up to the A614 and through another little place called Wellham Bridge. Uh, and that will pretty much complete the entire trip around Spalding Moor, home upon Spalding Moor. And I do hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a big one. And uh, I've probably not caught everything, but I don't expect to when one when, when I have when I have one of this size, of this magnitude. Anyway, I will see you again at some point in the East Riding. My name's been Andy and I've been the Village Idiot. This has been the Parish of Home upon Spalding Moor. And I'm out. Bit of bonus content for you. That there is the water tower that was mentioned in the picture bit of the Spaldington episode. There it is on the right and Spaldington is two and a half miles away down that road that I'm just passing on the right hand side. See you later guys, I'm out!